there is a, um, a very famous custom that we have on Rosh Hashanah, which we all know and love. We take an apple, we cut it, and we dip it into honey, into dvash. Had a student who was on a diet. She said, can I use Splenda? I said, of course you can, but you may have an artificial sweet year. And we don't want that, my friends. We want the real sweet year this year. What is the reason we dip the apple into the honey? Well, there's two things going on. There's apple and there's honey. Honey is good, it's sweet. So we ask Hashem for a Shana Tova Umutuka, for a good year that is sweet. Why do you need both? Why does it need to be good and sweet? Because some things are good for you, but they're not sweet. Like me, having to go for a root canal about two months ago. That was good for me, but it was not a sweet experience. And so I say, Hashem, give us a good year, a year of tov, of goodness, but please make it sweet as well. <clears throat> but why honey? Well, honey comes from bees. But it can't come from a bee, because if it did come from the bee, it wouldn't be kosher. Because whatever comes out of a non-kosher animal is not kosher. That's why you cannot eat pig milk or camel milk, because those creatures are not kosher, but you can eat cow or goat milk. So why does the bee? Because the bee, my friends, does not produce the honey, it collects it for us, stores it, and then gives it. And so the bee is representing something very important. And that is you can deal in a situation where you're not behaving so well, you're not so kosher, and yet you are still able to produce good, sweet things. And so we like the bee. The bee is functioning as a living example of that maybe we've been not been so great, and yet we're still able to produce sweet and effective things this year. Okay, I buy the honey principle. But why the apple? I mean, really? You have to dip an apple in the honey? How did apples appear on the scene? Says Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, the wisest of all men. And he says, you know what? The Jewish people are like an apple tree in the orchard. What a strange comparison. Why are we, the Jewish people, like an apple tree, ketapuach biyar, in the orchard? And he says, I'll tell you why. Because apples, some say, by the way, it refers to an etrog, but we're going to use an etrog for Sukkot about a week later, and they're too expensive to start dipping in the honey. So we'll go with the apple. But there's something about an apple production that is different from all other fruits. Says the Gemara that all other fruits follow the same pattern. <coughs> the tree grows, the leaves come out, the blossom comes out, and then out comes the fruit. Why does it happen in that order? Because before the fruit comes, it needs to be protected from the wind, the sun, the rain, predators. And so Hashem designed it beautifully. First all comes the leaf, then comes the blossom, and then comes the fruit. That is not true when it comes to the apple or the etrog. When it comes to those fruits, first of all comes the apple, and then comes the blossom and the leaf. Says the Gemara, now that is a Jewish fruit. We are the fruity people. Why? Because, my friends, <coughs> we stood at Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, three and a half thousand years ago, and we said, Na'asev Nishma, we're going to do and we're going to listen. Just like the fruit that jumps out and says, I can't wait. Don't keep me hanging. I want to experience life. 
I want to experience the sweetness of life. And so the apple, my friends, represents every we are at this time of year. We don't know what the judgment's going to be. We can get really scared. We could hide ourselves away, but we don't. We jump out. And we're willing to expose ourselves to the elements, putting our emunah, our faith in Hashem. So two things so far. Be good to each other, because your din and cheshvan on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is going to be based more about how you treat other people than you'll ever know. And number two, you've got to have faith that the judgment and the upcoming year is going to be amazing. Make yourself into an apple and dip yourself into honey. Not literally, it's too sticky, but you get the idea. How about the shofar? What has the shofar got to do with all of this judgment and 